So in for repair this week on Workshop Wednesday, we have our Toyota Hilux. We also have the Mikhail Straw Chopper. We also have in one forklift and a 7A10. But first of all, we'll head over to Mick with the 7A10. 7A10 in for a small little bit of TLC. Handy um, one. Handy one, yeah, Mick. What's well, well, it looks that way. Uh, fuel line, our fuel cooler out here, the fuel pipe going to it, if the car comes around there, you can see it. It's just <coughs> fatigue, age. It's all cracked. That was pissing diesel level. I squeezed it all right and I slowed it down, but it's all... If you look at the pipe, you can very see badly. it's all perished. Hold well, on, we give it a wipe. See all the cracks in it? And it's gone hard as a rock, which is usually... So the purpose of that then, make is just to heat the fuel? No, cool it. I mean, yeah, cool it down yeah. here with the coolers on the front. Yep. All you see, with common rail, your temperatures go way up. But, um, I think even... Oh no, 6920s, they had it as well, but they're coming around. They have a yeah. at the front. So it's just here, yeah. just in front of the... We'll get her off and see what size hose is and then decide where we're going for. Red, yeah. That's it, but it's looking like we're going to have to change I'll the, change the two, two of them. Yeah. there. Because it's even, you can see it here. Why you don't get soaked with diesel? Okay. Whoop. So <laughs> you can see all the cracks in it there. Ah, so yeah. It's completely perished. Age. Just, just age and time, that's How really all it is. Thing? Zero three, I think. Zero three, so it's twenty years old. Oh, Zero no. three, yeah, twenty. Fair, fair enough. We won't argue with that. If this is all yeah. you get, just going to take these two pipes off off the, the diesel cooler mm. and um, replace them there. It looks like a heavy wall pipe. Watch it there now with diesel. Is it braided? I wouldn't. You'd know by how flex it's probably stiff uh, anyway. It's a single braid. It is too. Yeah, there is a braid in it. Yeah. And it's very, it's a very heavy wall pipe. You don't want that person and diesel piston. Although it's not too bad in this side, you're away from the exhaust. It was the other side, it'd be a different story. Right. There'll be smoke. Ready. Okay. <coughs> so we have our Toyota Hilux in for in for CVRT, which is a commercial vehicle road test. Uh, the wordiness of it, and we want to go through the basics on it. Now, we know most of you guys will have a, a vehicle or a Jeep of some mm -hmm. sort they're doing on the farm, and just to run through it there before, some leads will probably run them through into a, maybe go into a mechanic or wherever yeah, it is, yeah. and uh, have a look into or the put them into the test and see. And put but that's costing money. Yeah, well, some people it. will just throw them in the test, see what happens, get mm -hmm. it fixed, and get it back in. So this is a relatively fresh enough Jeep. It's only a four-year-old Jeep. Shouldn't be too much wrong with it, but so we're just going through the basics with Mick. Where would you start off? There is a few small critical um, tests to be done. Basis on the engine, and that's generally your levels and where they are at. Um, Brake fluid, coolant, good. engine good. oil, power steering, screen wash. Don't forget that. Everyone yeah. forgets it and goes in and it'll fail if your screen wash is not working. And make sure the battery's tight. Yeah, so that? if, if someone have changed the battery of some sort, which I've forgot to put the strap back on. Three years, make sure the strap has come back on and make sure you get the right battery to go back into it because it the does make a difference. Yeah. The other thing, anything that's added has to be fused at the battery. Okay, so we've cables on here for uh, power supply for the bowsers and that yeah. at the back, plus the hitch, any of that. That's in there. So that's basically your engine uh, sorted then. Your number plate in it, Mick, is that, is that a, a critical one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that one passed before. Well, it? yeah, it did, so we're going to leave it as it is. We'll Numbers are a bit small. As it is, but if you do have any fancy yeah. number plates, make sure... Yeah, put the ordinary rules back on. For get, get the ordinary rules back on for the test. So, so starting off with our tyres, then, obviously a visual check on them, Mick. There always is a little indicator on the people. May yeah. not or may, may, may know about them. Little arrow, every 60 degrees on the tyre. See the little pointer there? Coming across, there's your wear indicator there. I don't know if the camera's picking her up. I'm mucking that. The back ones are a bit more worn. These are borderline because of the wear here in the inside. Yeah. Right? Um, while you're there, check your shocks if they're dry. And really, you should jack it up and check all the ball joints, tracker downs, everything. Now, this is low money, so, and it's only had to be serviced in your main dealer. Yeah, you've got service in there, so it's not that. Yeah, now, so your nuts then have to be, uh, yep. wheel nuts have to be exposed. Yeah, if they're covered and you don't take the covers off, you'll fail. Yeah, so that's why when you all yeah. see the hub kept Same off. with the seat belts. Make sure they're all clipped, particularly the middle back one. If it's gone down under the seat, they'll also fail. In here, pedal rubbers. Make sure they're on it. No dash, no um, mill light. Malfunction in the care light on the dash. And then from there on, wiper blades. Make sure they're not flared or torn on the ends. 
and then go around all your lights. While I'm, while I'm here, I normally clip in all the seatbelts. It just... Yeah. Like, if you're making the, life, the job easier for the guy, yeah. you're making life easier for yourself. Plus, how clean it. We haven't done that yet. No, so Obviously. cleaning is the last thing we've done. Now, there was one thing that we did notice from the last time when we went into the test was the tray underneath the sump engine. Guard. The sump guard was... <clears throat> Um, if there's a lot of crap in it, they, mm -hmm. they don't really like it because obviously no one likes being underneath there when it's dirty. So yeah. we will drop that and give that a wash. And power wash underneath when, 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 when we're going to do it. Oh. Also, one I forgot, uh, windows, make sure they're working. I have a feeling it may only be the front ones. Oh, we're good. <clears throat> and the same on the other side, and we're good there yeah. as well. Make sure your mirrors are good. I don't know that the electric mirror has to be working, but the mirror glass has to be good. Yeah. And no cracks around the edges. Same on all the panel work, no sharp edges. And no, windscreen. No cracks in your windscreen. Uh, I think the rule, it used to be only was A4, directly in front of the driver, A4 page size, anything in there. Cracks would fail it, but chips and that, if they're in your line of vision for the driver, they'll fail it. Yeah. Check yeah. the door for play, and that you, on the hinges, and that your check straps are checking the door now. Yep, side lights. Yeah, brakes. Yep. Right indicator. Left indicator. Reverse and fog. You have to be on dip lights for fog, Paul. If I could find it back now, it's probably down here somewhere, no, is it? On to dips and the second one. You still get a second? Yeah, help. Is it working there now? I tell you, yeah, we're single because the reverse light on the other side. That was a number plate light bulb, that was blown while it was black. But there again, that's on all the time, so. Fair, reasonable fair. Tow bar, all mounted properly, no bare wires. Uh, a trick I got caught out of. Some of these sockets have an isolator for the fog light on the Jeep if you have the trailer on. And it's a little plastic pin in the socket and it sticks. And if you're getting problems with your fog, fog light, check that it hasn't got a little pin in here in the side of the socket. Okay. Uh, anything then after that? Obviously, yeah. Uh, check straps on that. Check straps on that. There's your indicator, there. Now that's a, that's borderline fail. That's fail because it's flush, flush, and there. That's actually like a tire press a bit in the hard side, Paul. Yeah. It's ballooned the tire up. Well, well, but there again, bad, bad, bad air can do it as well. And you'll also find something that with a wider tire, especially on the, the BMWs there, the inside of it will be more war. Mm. You can be putting your hand here and thinking the tire's not bad, and then <coughs> all of a sudden, it's completely bald inside. So shocks and uh, just checking your exhaust, basically getting underneath it, uh, rolling, getting in on the dolly there and having a look, or if you have a pit there to get down and have Brake a look. Pipes and stuff like Brake that. Pipes this and stuff is fresh, like that. so you shouldn't yeah. have a corrosion yeah. issue there. We should not, no, hopefully not. That's anyway, one of the so. more common ones on the older cars. Right, so look, we just need to get in the wash bay and get, uh, get it cleaned up and have her shining. So uh, I think presentation, especially when you go into any of these uh, road well, tests. If you come in with the shitty looking, they're going to think what's this bollard. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, true. That's, that would be my view anyway. Yeah, you're right. You're right mate, if he doesn't so. expect his own yoke, what's it going to be like? Yeah, look, we'll get, get it cleaned up and uh, yeah, ready, so should be good to go.
Well, how'd you get on? All passed. All good. Mick did a good job, yeah. There we go. Just got the new tyres on, she's ready for go. That'll do it. Keep it going for another year. Yeah. Is came in from the Padeja grading shed, and this is a shaft, it's an agitation shaft, which spins and you can turn the speed up and down on it. Now, the problem with, with it is that one of these, uh, there's a series of seven shafts sits into just like. Well, they're melted over completely there. Oh, Poly paint go normally. There's a plastic bush and they shoved down into the pipe and there's a little stub on the collar. And as here. you can see here, these stubs have completely worn to, let's say they're probably down at four mil, five mil there. Yeah. And originally were at 12 mil. Yeah. So these are going to have to be replaced. Um, we're able to pull one off on the end, which wasn't too bad to do because you can get the pullers out, clean the shaft and pull it off. A little bit of heat. No, it took a bit of heat. It took a fair bit of heat now to get them off. Uh, the 29 years old machine. Yeah. So it's still working strong. We got a few bits, other bits done over the weekend as well. Just so this is just yeah. uh, bit of an overhaul. Keep, keep, isn't it? keep it going. Yeah, bit by bit. Yeah. Do a bit by bit, and that's it. Keep it going. But uh, these studs, I'm going to have to grind them off the back here and punch them out. They're, they're basically just 12 mil. They're probably 12.9 12 bolts cut, I'd say, originally. Yeah, There's yeah. just a bit of hardness in them. And we'll replace them again with 12.9s. And what's the proposal for the, going to go with new So we're going to, yeah, tubing. we're going to get new tubing and new polypenko ends and fit them in with the 12 mil hole in them again. We'll probably machine them down and fit it back up together and that's yeah. about it yeah there's nothing nothing major now the biggest problem here it's this is here yeah so as you can see two, here two colors here back to back yeah so the biggest problem we have david is yeah side, these colors it? here so these ones at the end were grand because we we're able to take out the grub screw heat it and pull it off with the pullers these ones here aren't we're not we don't have that luxury so we were grub screwing them i'll heat them and get the grub screwed all right but I've nothing to pull them. Yeah. I've nothing to get them on the end of the shaft here and pull them. So the only uh, thing is, if you've got a bit of heat, you might split them off. We'll, we'll, might, we'll wedge, wedge them off. We'll off this wedge, side. Them, wedge them with um, yeah. with uh, chisels or something yeah. like that. We'll just try and work his way back. Now, if I can get him back to here, you won't I have get, to do I won't have to do anything with him. Yeah. Probably get to work him and then get him back together and slide him back up in the shaft. Yeah. And, so we're uh, going to just have to take out these remaining studs out of them. Yeah, uh, seem to be just colours are fine. The pushed, colours are, yeah, are, colours are fine and not pushed in and, and welded here at the back. Yeah, that's it. So, so it's just a bit of work and a bit of time. I wish you luck with that one. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. L lovely job. Yeah, lovely. Front weight box in for a little bit of attention. We have a hinge broken here. Now, I suppose it is a big lid for start, David, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. I'd say what's happening is when you lift it up, oh, sorry Oops. about that, lift it up, I'd say there's probably parts getting stuck in here. Yeah. And when you close it, then it's raising it in the middle and putting a hoop. But well, we can see a it. small little bit of a uh, shape there, a yeah. of a bend on it there, isn't it? A little bit. You, if you look along it, I put a level along it there and uh, just to get the shape back into it. But it's... Um, it could yeah. be, probably could be stronger under hinges too, to be fair. Could be stronger, but it's just putting stress on it. So when it's, a, when it's shaped like that, it's putting more stress on these hinges. And they're at, just with opening and closing, they're just cracking off it. Now, it. what has anybody got on the front box? So this is on the front of the 250, you have it out plowing. Absolutely great addition to have on the front of a tractor. The only disadvantage is it's probably out that little bit further and it can be sometimes when you're coming to a crossroads it can be hard yeah, enough yeah. to see around it. But uh, if we're carrying all the bits and pieces, now the, 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 the beauty about having the boxes you can fill it with weights. We had a lot of leaf weights left over. They're not just yeah. as common now to be using them on the front of the tractors as they used to. So the boxes mm. are the 
the weight well, the beauty of them is you can put them into yeah. this and leave them in it, yeah. and then just lift it up to the three point linkage. There's no yeah. So we have about no I think there's about 800 kilos or so of weights alone, and I have then with the box added on, and then there's obviously um, we have two boxes in them. So we have all our plow parts, all our grease guns. Now we're just going to clean it out because there is old parts in there as well that don't really want to be in there. Um, just need to section half a little bit better. Uh, one side here we have skim up pints, all Cleveland parts in there and we have our tips here as well a ratchet set for a change of pints we have on that side they all shin pieces, all to shin pieces landslide yeah. and we generally have an air ratchet or an air um, impact with it as well an electric impact not sure what's in this one here Uh, we have a strap and we have a share. Yeah, so there's probably lots of parts in there that. Mm. There's another plow in it, Pat. Another <laughs> plow ready to go. But yeah. yeah, great great to have it with you, at least then they're not in the track because you don't want parts oh, running yeah. around. And they're Saves always the journey with the service van every time. Yeah. At least they can do a bit out in the field. And the fact then you have seven sods on as well, it means mm. you have to carry a lot of bits with yeah. you. So we're just going to clean out the box, tidy up the box, restock it. This one came from Farmfit Engineering Limited. Um, so, I don't know actually where they are. Must be in the UK, are they? UK made it, is it? Yeah. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. That's yeah. Yorkshire. So, that's it. We get the box tidied up, get it fixed up, and have it ready to go. Wheel studs on the DAO forklift. This one is always in the workshop, and it really is Marco's favourite forklift. So, he does all that. He's his toolbox, he's all the bits Not on it there. Now, problem we're having is we have two wheel studs. One initially went mm. and we were all opening them up the and the second yeah, one went. Which Mick. Yo. Why would it, why would they have broke? Uh, no over tighten or, or loose no, one another? No, first day we came to it, <coughs> um, there was one stud gone and I said I'd check the rest of them and the second one sheared. And they, they're clean shears, like they, they weren't, I oh, we battled that to get it out. Yeah. But if you look at the, the back of it, it was fairly good all the way through. Normally you'll get uh, rust in one part of it. The other one's here somewhere. <clears throat> don't know where he's gone. He's going over the far side there somehow. Oh yeah. You have the other stud there. Yeah, but that, that's sitting there a while now, so it's rusty looking. But they were both clean in there, which is normally a sign that the material is okay. I don't, and then I'm taking them off this time. Another one shared. Which is, what's going on? Is it a big job to put them on? No, just a bit of baiting. Yeah, a bit of hammer. Well, we do, we press them in. So we, we and they're not bad. They're not bad because they're, they're, this one's unusual. Normally on, on the forklift you have drum brakes. This one has disc, oil immersed disc. And normally when you take them off, you take the whole hub off, and it's a horrible weight. Plus it restricts your access to getting at the studs. This one flat plate. You saw it during the video. Yeah. Six new studs. Yep. Oh yeah, and nuts. And nuts. <clears throat> so we'll stick the wheel back on, and that's the plan. That's the <clears throat> another job over the way. Forklift. Month. Huh? Farcliffe month. Farcliffe two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah every, I think every day is a Farcliffe, isn't it? <clears throat> At the minute, anyway. But they were flat out before Christmas, so you'd expect shit. And we got that. <clears throat> now, when we get that little chip out when he's on, we're yeah. going to do more. I know, do, do that with <clears throat> They weren't overly, although well, we used the gun. Oh, fuck it, that's not how you. No wonder they off to every position. Yeah. We're okay. <clears throat> Little tip, the health and safety guys won't like us, but um, block of timber under the bottom of the mast. You can see it down there. Tilt forward. And your forklift raises up. Obviously put something under the back here when you're working under it for safety. 
As you can see, Jack is part of the workshop team today. He's on a bit of a wash and he's getting ready his straw chopper. Is that time of year, Jack? Yeah, like, so uh, this little girl is getting a bit busier and busier this time of year. Um, cows going to start calving and that, so I said I'd just bring it down. Yeah. Give it's it a just, yeah, it's a maintenance run through there. We're yeah. going to do a good wash and a good grease and then good when you do wash then. it. And just check over the beauty about giving it a wash, like you didn't have to wash it, but I'm after seeing there, uh, when it is washed, there's one grease nipple I'm after missing. Yeah. So it's them kind of things, when you do wash, you might see something that's out of place. Or yeah, now we did, see, we did see a bit of a wear here on the tyre and that's probably from the road work that has been doing up and down the road. Yeah. And it's just with the camera of the road. So it's we'll wearing one side there. We'll we just either swap that tyre or we get them to have a look at it. If we have to get a new tyre, we will have to get one. Because uh, you just don't want that to happen, yeah. especially on the road. No. After that, I mean, it's 2000 and... 2015 machine, yeah, right? 2015 and... Nine year old. And yeah, done a lot of work. Obviously, there is some... Uh, some hits yeah, in the tail from. Few hits and a it yeah. the shoot, it all depends what straw hooks into it. Sometimes you know, some years you're going to get uh, a bit straw of stone. Was raked, yeah, raked and up it was raked up, and, yeah. up, and I mean, there's, there's been a lot of that this last yeah. number of years, and you're going to get stones in, the, and it will damage the shoot. Now, luckily, you can yeah. put liners into them, or you can um, put a new piece back into them on the shoot. And it's the same here in the drum. But after that, it's just a general wash and give it a good greasing. Yeah. Have it ready and make sure that there's nothing, nothing obvious on it. And no. again. As you say, a good wash will... will, yeah. will uh, Especially going into this time of year, too, busy time of year. Yeah. Do you know, you calving cows, you want to make sure you have all your machinery correct and... Yeah. They'll give you enough trouble without... Yeah, we don't want... Yeah, we don't want... We don't want machinery trouble as long with... No. Along with calving no. trouble. In fairness don't. to Mikhail, the paint paintwork's very, very good. good yeah. Very yeah. good, yeah. I have to say, I have to commend them on that. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's they're, they're a fine little, uh, little chopper. Very yeah. popular there, I think, too, aren't they? Yeah. They seem yeah. to be... Reliable. Well. Yeah. Right, that'll do. We'll let you walk away on that one. I'll do. So that's it for this week's Workshop Wednesday. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos. Uh, yes, yeah, look at stuff from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm. We'll talk to you all next Wednesday.